When you send CC7 messages to a MIDI instrument, what you're doing is adjusting an internal volume control that's completely independent from the unit's hardware volume control. Now, as we saw in the previous video, there is no physical control traditionally or by default associated with CC7, so I'll be using the knob on this keyboard controller to generate those messages. And here's how CC7 works. What we're looking at here is a simplified view of the inner workings of a synthesizer. Here we see its internal sound generator generating a waveform, and that flows into this triangle, and I'm using that to represent the internal volume control that we're going to adjust the volume of with CC7 messages. Now, normally, the volume level of the signal that comes out of this end of the internal volume control is the same as the level that comes into it. But when the synthesizer receives CC7 messages with values lower than 127, the volume is reduced. We can turn the volume back up to maximum by sending it a CC7 message with a value of 127, or we can silence the volume completely by sending it a CC7 message with a value of zero. And this behavior is built in to most MIDI instruments. So you don't have to do any custom sound programming to use CC7 messages as a volume control. So quite unlike the way that the mod wheel and other CCs can be used to introduce all manner of effects, CC7 messages are dedicated to controlling volume via MIDI. The channel strips in DAW software will often react to CC7 messages as well. So there it is, CC7, commonly referred to as MIDI volume. And before we take a look at CC11, let's take a look at CC10. CC10 messages are used to control panning, which is how a sound is positioned to come out of one speaker more than another in the stereo field. And like CC7 messages, many MIDI instruments are designed to respond to CC10 messages to affect the panning without you having to do any custom programming to achieve that effect. With CC10 messages, we have a similar situation to what we saw with pitch bend in terms of how many MIDI values we have to represent the positions on either side of the center point. So out of the 128 possible positions that a CC message can communicate for panning, one value has to be used for the center, usually the value of 64, and to represent panning positions that put the sound in the left speaker, we have 64 values from 0 to 63, 64 in the center, and then to represent positions on the right side, we have the remaining values from 65 to 127. And similar to the situation with pitch bend, panning positions may be displayed differently in a DAW than the actual data byte values that are contained in the CC10 messages themselves. CC11 has the official name of Expression Controller, and MIDI musicians commonly refer to this simply as Expression. So what kind of musical expression can we expect to express with CC11 messages? Well, it kind of all depends. Some instruments don't respond to CC11 messages at all. Not much to express except disappointment, I guess. And on some instruments, the only effect that CC11 will have is to raise or lower the volume, just like CC7, except that the volume changes you make with CC11 are completely independent of any volume changes you make with CC7. And that's because in a situation like this, you'll have two internal volume controls, one controlled by CC7 and the other controlled by CC11. And like CC7, this behavior may be built into the design of your sound module or keyboard or plugin. So how is it useful to have two different internal volume controls? Well, here's an example. I used CC7 to 
ride the volume and give some nice ebb and flow to this sort of heavy, airy sound. But now I think that part is sitting too up front in the track. I'd really like it just to be in the background. So instead of redoing my CC7 volume rides, I'm going to lower the volume of this part by using CC11. And in a case like this, I'm using CC11 as a trim control or secondary volume adjustment. And now let's look at this aspect of CC11 messages that cause confusion and misconceptions. Some instruments, and most notably contact-based sample instruments, are programmed in such a way that when you send them CC11 messages with ever-increasing second data byte values, the sound will respond by not only getting louder, but also brighter. And this simulates the natural behavior of acoustic instruments. They not only get louder when they're played harder, but they get brighter too. And when a sound is programmed to respond to CC11 in this way, you can produce some very convincing acoustic instrument simulations. As you could hear, the sound got louder and brighter as the CC11 values increased and then it got duller and softer as the values decreased. However, this kind of response to CC11 messages is not built in to most instruments. And when a program does respond in this way, it's only because it's been specially programmed to respond that way. And for those instruments that do respond to CC11 messages as simply a volume control, you won't find that the volume changes that you make with CC11 messages are any more or less expressive than volume changes made with CC7 messages. And that's the skinny on CC11.